Hello, episode 29, one to go till 30. Look at that. Welcome. It is Love is a Battlefield, the domestic violence podcast. My name is Tilly Moore, and today we are talking about information gathering. Random topic. I was going to talk about hoovering, but no, because today's just going to be a short one because I do feel a little bit bad about how long last week's was. I lost lots of followers, <laughs> literally, uh, and I don't blame you. Too long. Shut up. Anyway, and just a nice quick little snippet today, but very important. Everything is very important when it comes to learning about these vile creatures. So today, information gathering, what is it? It is something that narcissists do, and it is mostly at the start of the relationship, but you'll notice it is all the way through. And we because of romantic films and our idea that we've been fed of what romance is and everything, we think it's someone taking a genuine interest in us. Finally, this man is asking me how I, my day was, how things were at work, what who my friends are at work, what's going on there, oh, how are things with your boss, what about this and that, and you think, wow, this person is taking an interest and they ask you all about your childhood and they ask you things and you're used to guys going, yeah, I don't really care. Don't tell me about that. I don't care. And you think finally someone cares and they're asking questions and they genuinely care. No, they don't. They're just gathering information. Why? To use against you. You think that is ridiculous. Who thinks that far ahead? Who's that calculated and planned? These evil narcissists are. That's what a DV is. That's what abuse is. Abuse as I've said many times, isn't a couple arguing that just gets out of hand because someone has anger issues. That can happen. But most DV, especially these days, is calculated, evil, conniving, planned, and the person is a narcissist who's doing it. And they do all these textbook behaviors that abusers do to gaslight everyone around the victim to think the victim's crazy and to gaslight the victim to think they're useless and worthless and crazy and no one else would want them. And it's all just these mind games and absolute chaotic, evil bullshit. And that's what they do. So information gathering is not someone finally caring and taking an interest in you or your life, which is really sad. It's really sad. Uh, an abuser of mine used to always repeat, no one actually cares about other people. Like people don't care about other people, you know, because he's an narcissist and he doesn't, he doesn't understand empathy and the fact that humans genuinely, genuine, I said genuinely and genuinely as one word, it was like a Siamese word. That is amazing. But narcissists will do that. They cannot comprehend caring and empathy for others. So they they believe that everyone else thinks like them. And that's understandable because I think we do that too. We're all guilty of that, of thinking, well, we have a human brain, so ours is probably similar to other people's. But narcissists cannot perceive the fact that people actually care for others and have empathy they think it's fake. They think that when we do empathy acts, that it's a means to an end. It's something like they would do. It's, oh, well, I'm doing this because that will make this person do X, Y, Z for me. And then I'll get this and then I'll get that. They don't think people ever care because they don't have the capacity to care. So back to information gathering. I always like to back things, you know, my opinion, my experiences and and things I've heard and learned from DV educators and everything, I always like to back it up with an online source, you know, just so you know that there is information out there and it's not just me running my mouth, even though nine times out of 10, it is just me running my mouth. So according to medium.com, they have an article and it's called the narcissist asked, okay, this needs to be a plural. Does it? It says the narcissist asks question to collect data. It's questions, isn't it? The narcissist asks questions to collect data, not question. It's very, it reminds me of um, how Indians, when they learn English, they don't plural, plurify, is that a word? They don't plural things. So they go, I ask question. I, and other, it's not just Indians, there's other languages as well where the plurals of English is actually um, different to their language. And so, that's what it sounds like. The narcissist ask question to collect data. And honestly, anyone learning English, like more power to you. I could not learn English if I was not born in an English language, English language land. I honestly, anyone out there whose English is their second language, 
credit to you. It's the hardest language in the world and we don't understand it ourselves half the time and it keeps changing and the slang and everything keeps all these new words and things keep coming out and we confuse ourselves. So anyone who's learned English, you're amazing. So anyway, back to off those tangents, the narcissists ask questions to collect data and the subheading is be careful with whom you share your life with. Now, I'm going to read some of this. It's amazing. In the complex landscape of human relationships, it's essential to exercise caution and discernment when choosing those with whom we share our lives. You know, we have a lot of discernment. We look for red flags, but these cunning little things, you just can't always pick it. So don't blame yourself if you do. It says narcissists have a knack for manipulating those around them to serve their own needs. And they often employ subtle tactics, such as asking questions to collect data to maintain their control and dominance over their victims. And they say they're going to explore the insidious ways that they use questions to gather information. They are masters of manipulation. They use questions as a way to gather information about their targets, such as their vulnerabilities, fears and desires. Armed with this knowledge, they can tailor their behavior to exploit these weaknesses and maintain control over their victims. For instance, a narcissist may ask probing questions about your past relationships, childhood traumas, or insecurities under the guise of showing genuine interest. In reality, they are collecting data to use against you later. Yes. And I can confirm this happened to me. They found out about everything and asked so many questions about childhood trauma. And it's not just to use against you for like what he did in the end where he would abuse me with it and then he would go to people like family or anything where I talked about traumas or anything and then blab to them things and tell them things and make up things and lie and get a little bit of truth but mix a lot of lie into it to convince them to hate me and other things. So they use any bit of information they can to destroy you. And yes, they want to know your vulnerabilities so they know what your weaknesses are and they want to know what you like as well because they become what you like as well If when they're in the love bombing, grooming mode or they've just abused you. They turn into your perfect man because they have gathered enough information. They know how to be your perfect man. They also know how to destroy you. It is fucking sick. And I know you're sitting there going, who would do this? It's once you start looking into narcissists, you're just like, I had no idea that's what abusers were. This is absolutely bullshit. Like who can be fucked being this psychotic? So they fake empathy, which is one way of getting the information out of you. It lures you into a false sense of security. They ask questions that seem caring and empathetic on the surface, but their true intentions are self-serving. By pretending to care, they gain your trust. And when they gain your trust, ooh, and they do it quite quickly too, very early on. It makes it easier for them to manipulate you and control you. And then it says, create an account to read the full story. <laughs> no, 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 I'll go Google. I'll find something else. But I think, oh, 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 oh. There's so many cool ones, like five behaviors that will expose a narcissist. No, you can't expose them straight away. I mean, sometimes they drop a few red flags, but usually they're trying to hide the red flags in their little happy sack of destruction. Okay, I want to share this quote from pairedlife.com. That's P-A-I-R-E-D life.com. They have an article about it and they have this quote and it says, this includes the names of your current friends, their addresses and where they work. A malignant narcissist is not above contacting someone in your social circle or arranging a surprise encounter in an attempt to ruin your other relationships. Yes, that's when they do the smear campaign and they pretend they're just running into someone or I accidentally messaged you oh, while we're talking or oh, I bumped ad friend, you know, like they will try and turn everyone around you against you. And it says, they know that isolation is the best means of control. 
And then they've gone on to say, although we can't live in fear that everyone we meet has a, is bad, uh, it's best to exit the diet. They're basically, okay, I'm not going to read all that. They're saying when you meet someone, don't tell them stuff about your life. Now, when I got into the relationship that was abusive, I had been in crappy things and already learnt, you know, hold back a bit. And I did. I held a lot back for a long time as long as I could, but there gets a stage where you trust them and they're like your person that you're with, but I'm now learning and realizing like watching TV shows, trying to watch like and observe couples that have been together for years and how they'll even have secrets from each other. I used to be such an open book and I know a lot of DV survivors are just those beautiful, empathetic, open book kind of people. And now I realize I have to be quite selfish. I I feel like it feels selfish to me to be so guarded and hold, keep everything a secret. And if I was with someone and after a while I trusted them, I would start telling them, you know, little stories about things that have happened in my life. And it's so sad to think that I'm such like a narcissist target that if I end up in another relationship one day that I would have to just not like keep all my secrets, like my life a secret. And it's so not like me. I'm such a, well, you tell me about your life. I'll tell you about mine. And we'll just share like story times and how we got where we are. And, and I think it helps you in a relationship because it helps you see why someone is the way they are or why they respond to that scenario in that way. And it it helps you get to know your partner. And when this person's your partner, you get to a stage where you do tell them things. And I'm realizing I can't. And like, I would feel like it was a bit fake and I wasn't really in a relationship. So I, I would try and do what I did last time and hold back for as long as I could. But there would obviously come a point where you slowly trust them and tell them stuff. And this one was patient he was just determined and he was so patient because he was like, I'm going to freaking get her and I'm going to find out things. And I did fall for it. And I did think that, oh, this person cares. They're asking me about my day. Whereas I'd had exes, it would be like, I don't want to hear about your day. I don't want to know about your life or your work. If you want to talk about your life, talk to your girlfriends. I don't want to hear about it. So coming from that, it was like, wow, this person is talking to me they're asking me questions. They actually care, but no, it was evil. Like the one person who finally cares. Are you feeling like, are you thinking what I'm thinking when you finally meet someone who cares and it turned out that it was all fake and they were evil? And it's like, oh, geez, Louise. This person they've referenced in here, they said a professor in America said one in 25 people are malignant dangerous narcissist. I believe it's more than that. I don't know if it's, there's been a shift, but there's no way they could know either because narcissists, as we all know, will not get diagnosed with narcissism. There's no way of knowing. And I think this is just someone guesstimating. But when you look at all women going out to date, how many of them end up with like someone with narcissistic traits and abusive traits? It is way more than one in 25. Is it, it's like what, one in three or one in four, one in five or something uh, in DV or go through, I don't know how many, like if you send 10 women onto Tinder, you and nine mates, you know, you're going to be, if you're like me, you're going to, you're going to get the narcissist. You think how many of them will, there'll be some F boys. They'll definitely get some F boys, but uh, how many of that group would find and someone with narcissistic traits and abusive qualities. I believe in Australia, even though it's all around the world, oh, oh my goodness, it's everywhere, isn't it? I don't know if it's just this, this generation, we're just educated now to, to see it and understand it. I think they've always been around and they've always been controlling, but society has always allowed men to beat women and children and control them. And the women have never had a voice. They've never been able to leave them and they've had to just be beaten and abused and controlled by these men the whole life. So the women had to be subservient to the men and just allow the narcissist to do what they want to them, go out and cheat and then come home and beat the crap out of them 
and they had to just serve them in a slave type kind of subservient kind of relationship and not ever leave because that was frowned upon years ago. So I think they these types have always been out there, but they are exposed now because we're trying not to treat women like dogs and hopefully we'll soon treat stop treating dogs like dogs and treat them better too. Like side note, pets used to get abused by men in the household a lot, so it'd be good if they were treated better too. Anyway, tangent train. So how do we prevent this happening? You fucking can't. <laughs> Excuse my French. I'm going to stop swearing. Should be like a New Year's rezo. Rezo? Resolution. Should be a New Year's resolution. Don't swear anymore. Be classy. I'll be classy when men stop abusing women. So I'm just going to be a full raging swearing bogan for a long time because they need to just stop. Have you noticed the shift in society? Have you? I have seen it. I have seen like think TV shows and reflected on movies from yesteryear, from 20 years ago where we're like, oh, no, that couldn't happen now. Well, we couldn't do that now. We couldn't say that now. So there is a shift. It just takes time. And... Hopefully men are seeing in the media, DVs all covered, men are going to prison for it, men are unaliving, it's not TikTok, I can say the word, they're murdering women and hopefully they can see how, you know, governments are starting to say, look, we've had enough, stop doing this and hopefully they're starting to look at their behaviour and shift but obviously a lot still in the current generations were raised with misogyny and misogyny is like the seed of DV. It's the seed that's planted that sprouts into DV. Oh, that was beautiful, wasn't it? Lovely analogy. But away from all those tensions, we need to think, okay, how do we prevent this from happening? So you're in a relationship, you've just met someone, you know, on the first day, like how do those people do it? How do they do it? On the first date, it's like, oh, so what do you do for work? Not going to tell you. Oh, do you have any siblings? That's a secret. Um, What's your favorite color? Why? How are you going to use that against me? Oh, trust me. They will use your favorite color. They will use everything and anything they can against you to convince others you're crazy, to convince you you're nothing, and to slander you and destroy you, put you down, oh, and also to become what you want. Now, I was actually, oh, I've told this story before. Sorry. I'm just going to quickly say I was actually aware that they did this and that they pretend to be what you want them to be. And so I look back at relationships where I'd meet someone and on those first dates, I'd be like, oh, I like this color. I like the beach. I like that. And then they would say, oh, yeah, me too. Oh, wow, me too. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, me too. But really wasn't me too. They just did that to create those neural chemicals, those neurochemicals, those connections where I'm like, oh, wow, we have so much in common. But they just fake it. And I realized that was a thing. And so going into the one with the really bad abuser, I made sure I was very aware if I said something and he said, oh, yeah, me too. And I was very aware that if I said I like such and such color, like if he came back with, oh, yes, me too, or did he come out first with I like such and such color? I was so aware of it and assessing it because I was determined not to be in like a horrible relationship ever again. And it was literally the devil. So everything I did to check, I couldn't help. Like this person was a very, very manipulative person. So that brings us to the whole, what do we do? How do we prevent it? Basically, okay, first date, you, I think before you go into a first date or chatting online if you want to get to know them before you meet them. I mean, makeup isn't cheap and effort of going out. So, you know, toss it up. Sometimes it's good to, I think it's good to make sure your non-negotiables are covered, both of you, before you meet because you're making all this effort. I see women on TikTok putting on their makeup while they make their TikTok and then they come home and go, oh no, he liked something I didn't like, or he had kids or didn't have kids, or he smoked and I can't be around a smoker. There was like non-negotiables that you already knew they had, but they hadn't even assessed that before they put on all this makeup, took time out of their life, 
I don't know if they paid for an Uber, if they drove there, got parking, paid for, you know, their meal or whatever they did that night. And they went through all that when all it would have taken was, hey, do you like cheese? And them to say no or something and like, oh, I can't be with someone who doesn't like cheese. You know, find out those non-negotiables because we all have them. So my hot tip, my hot tip going forward would be actually do this. I did this once and it really helped me. Didn't help me avoid evil, but it helped me get into my head what I was looking for. And this is years and years ago. So write a list. Someone told me to do this and I did it. You write a list of things you want and things you don't want. And then your non-negotiables, things like you definitely don't want or definitely do need. Now it's easy to think of the obvious examples of definite not wants, but some examples of definitely do wants is if you haven't had kids yet and you really want in your life to have kids and you know you're obviously dating for a long-term situation looking to maybe get married or something one day so that would be a definite do they have to want kids in the future kind of thing and it or it could be you definitely need them to not want kids ever and that's really important for people who don't want kids and you will find some people who haven't written these lists will go in going They just won't think anything and they will know in themselves that they definitely don't want, no, they definitely do want kids. And then they'll date someone who has made it very, very clear they don't want kids and then it gets to that point where they have to break up and they're years in. And I always try to prevent that. So do a list and then that way you'll know the things that you should discuss before you make effort and put makeup on and your good undies although you don't need good undies for the first date because no man ain't getting the dessert with the first meal. <laughs> I mean, that's up to you. Um, and, I mean, do they deserve it, really? But in the whole scheme of avoiding the people who are narcissists, who are just asking questions to information gather. There's the first date. So you're doing your non-negotiables. You figured those out. You give a, then I think it's very wise to figure out what are you happy to disclose at what point? I mean, it all sounds like a whole bunch of overthinking and it's more fun just to go in a relationship kind of with your blinkers on and not think. But when, if you've ever had a history of being in a DV relationship, it's, and you don't want that to happen again, it's like you have to put some kind of things, some boundaries in, and it kind of sucks. So I think if I went in again, I would definitely think, right, what am I willing to disclose? And I would just think basic things that you could tell the public, you could tell a member of the public, like, oh, this is what I do for work. This is, I think you have to say where you work. Like you can't keep that a secret forever. Just try and be guarded and Be aware when they're asking questions. If you find yourself starting to talk about your childhood, pause for a second. It's hard if you've got ADHD because you're just on a roll and you're loving life. But pause for a second and just see right. Where did this come from? Did they ask a question or did I just run my mouth like I always do and go on a tangent? Did I tangent from talking about marshmallows in a campfire and do you like camping into childhood trauma? Did I do that tangent myself or did they actually ask it? How did we get here? And just be more aware of the conversations that are being had, the things they're asking. Also, what you're telling them, make sure they're telling you the same thing. If you're talking about what was school like? What were your parents like? And or your parents divorcing when you're little or something. Are they sharing the same kind of content with you or are they just sitting there asking question after question and you're being polite by answering, but they're not telling you? Or you there's there's this other one, and this is not a narcissist, this is a little insecure ego driven F boy. <laughs> These, there are some, I mean, they're not as dangerous as a narcissist, so go off, uh, that will not ask you anything. And while that is a prick move, it, you're not going to get murdered. You're probably just going to get cheated on or dumped. <laughs> I mean, you got to take the lesser of two evils. <laughs> 
No, but I had I have heard this on TikTok of people going on dates and the guy's just talking about himself and then the girl asks a question and then he answers it about himself and then she goes to say about her, like he's like, oh, yeah, I had a cat. And she's like, oh, well, I had a cat. And he's like, and he won't let her talk. And I think I was probably guilty of this when I was younger and didn't know I had ADHD. But, like, besides that ADHD excitement, like, it's not like that. You can tell when that's an ADHD thing because we're, like, excited but we're still asking you stuff because we're just like, yeah. But there are these, like, ego guys that just, they are so misogynistic that they give no Fs about women and they don't really care and they are literally there just to see how hot you are and if you're hot enough, they'll root you. That kind of guy, you know those guys? You know those guys. If you dated, you know those guys. So they will not ask you many questions about yourself. That doesn't mean they're amazing green flag, but it's a better sign. I mean, but then do not be fooled when a guy is taking interest in you. It seems like a gentle, sweet, sensitive guy. Another thing, message exes. Like let's, okay, it sounds psycho. Let's normalize messaging exes. If you are a single mum, you don't want to go through, put your kids through what I put my kids through. You don't want to do that. Why do has, have men taught us that it is the worst thing in the world to just, if they have an ex who's a mother of their kids or something, why can't you just touch base and say, hey, look, I'm a single mum. I've been through DV before. That's another thing. I'm not going to tangent, not going to tangent. I've been through DV before. I am looking out for my kids. I'm not being crazy. I'm not being intrusive. I don't want to know any extra information. I just wanted to quickly message you to say, hey, was he ever abusive? Is there any red flags or anything I need to know about? Because I'm starting a relationship with this person. I'm not asking you any details. I'm not being nosy. I'm not insecure or jealous. I just need to protect my kids because you, if you know about abusers, narcissists will lie. So I just wanted to touch base with you and see like I don't want to know why the relationship ended, but I'm just checking, you know, am I, is this person safe? Are there any criminal things? Are there any DV orders? Like, is there anything I need to know? Right. That sounds crazy to a lot of people. But if you are a mum, even if you're not a mum, you are worthy as well. You have every right to send that. And if you worded it like that and said, look, I've been through DV before, I'm not being jealous. I'm not being nosy. I'm not stalking the ex. I'm not being psycho. I genuinely cannot go through another DV relationship. So I'm opening this communication up to you. Just if this person has abused you, if there are any DVOs or anything, they're not telling me, I just really need to know. If not, you can ignore my message. You don't have to reply. I just wanted to know. You know, you can word it in a way where it's just common sense. And if they're going to go, oh, what a crazy bitch, well, there's something not right. Because any woman, I mean, a lot of us know what it's like out there in the jungle of dating. And if you get a message, it's sort of like honest, heartfelt, and just saying, look, I just, I don't need to know much. I don't need to know anything really, but just was there DV or any kind of abuse? Because I just cannot go through that again. I messaged his I've said this before, but I don't even know who, like if anyone listens to all the episodes, like whatever. (laughs) I messaged the ex, but it was when I'd left and it was not a year in, under a year, but I'd left due to the abuse. So this was like a a, um, afterthought thing, but they hoovered back and, oh, anyway, I can't believe they hoovered back after this, but uh, that's, that's a story I've actually told before, but So it wasn't at the start, it was when I'd already lived with them, already lots of things. So they'd already known about my existence uh, somehow. So they already knew about my existence. So it was quite late in the piece, but I had thought about it early in the piece and I really wish I had. And what stopped me was that, oh no, it's psycho if you do that, don't do that. And I wish... 
so hard, so much that I had forgotten that stupid thing men have taught us in society. Don't message the ex to find out if he's abusive or a cheater. Why fucking not? We need to change this. I should put this all over TikTok. Change it. You're not crazy. And that's what stopped me from messaging. And then what I learnt when it was too late and the damage was done and I was, you know, trauma bonded and covered in bruises and had permanent injuries I'll have the rest of my life, when it was too freaking late, this person told me, and I said the same thing, similar thing, don't, you know, you don't have to reply. I just want to know, like, were they ever abusive to you? And I literally expected back. No, it was fine because I he was he had me convinced it was all me. It was all my head. I'm the common denominator in all my abusive relationships. Now I know that he intentionally goes on DV page. He didn't meet me on a DV page, by the way, but he intentionally tries to find women who've gone through DV before. I think he has like heaps on the go at once until one admits that they tick all these like, oh, they're empathetic. Oh, they do this job. Oh, they have this. They have that. Oh, and they've been through DV. Trifecta. Whoa, so excited. Because once they find out, like, he's just like, well, no one's going to believe them. If it happens again, they're definitely going to think it's them because I'm not the first. So that's sick. But I, he had me believing that. And so I honestly thought she was going to go, no, everything was fine. You, why are you messaging me, you psycho bitch? Literally, I thought that's what I was going to get back. And what I got back, what he did to her and how she nearly lost her life, absolutely horrific, absolutely horrific. I could never expect it to get the reply I got and I could not recommend messaging more like early days. Tell everyone you're going to do it. Oh, no, you can't tell him because then he'll go and threaten her. You can't. If he's a psychopath, like a narcissist, he'll go and threaten them before you message them. And that's how he stopped me talking to this one. He threatened her babies. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, (laughs) reflection. There was a bit of a silent reflection there. That's it. I'm wrapping it up here. It's going to be a short one. We did it. We did it short. So information gathering. They get any information about you they can. So just be aware if someone's genuinely interested, and it's so hard, there's a fine line. There's the dickheads that don't give a shit because you're just a piece of meat to be fucked. Then there's the psychopaths who want to know everything. And then there's the ones in the middle who kind of give not too many fucks, but give a few fucks and do genuinely ask, genuinely ask questions. It is very hard. And you know, at the end of the day, you just try your best, but it's not on you. And that's, this is only really one red flag. And there are other things you can look for. Toward the end, it was very, not toward the end, middle to end or whatever. During the time with this abuser, this really bad abuser I had, it was so obvious, the information gathering, how I would come home from work and the questions, the detail in the questions Asking names, asking this, asking that. And yes, he'd use those same names against me later on. So in the detail of like wanting to know everything, it was very obvious that was a control thing. But at first it was quite subtle and they are subtle. So keep your wits about you and consider that whole messaging the X thing. We should start it. And we know who put out into society that you're crazy if you do that definitely not women it's definitely the men I mean it's a protective thing it's like holding your keys in your hand when you're walking late at night it's something that if you can contact the like you know okay last thing for today to anyone who has had a dv relationship I'm speaking to you if a girl woman randomly messaged you and said, hi, I've just started seeing, insert your ex's name here, I've been through DV before, I know this sounds crazy, I know that we're taught not to do this, but hey, I want to know because I can't go through this again. 
Had, was there any DV in the relationship? Is there anything you want to tell me? If not, you don't have to reply. You can call me mad or whatever, but I'm just trying to protect myself. I can't go through it again. And as you know, abusers lie. I'm not saying he's an abuser. I'm just doing this check. You know, they message something like that. You're going to want to tell them, aren't you? I mean, girl code. You need to tell them, right? You're going to go, wow, yes, an opportunity to help save someone from them. I see so many toxic comments under posts where women are saying, oh, suck shit to the next girl. She's got the guy who abused me in trash. I'm like, why are we like this, guys? Save the next girl if you can, if it's safe for you. There's a lot of these men, it's not safe because I was so frustrated that the one before me had heard that I existed and seen things on Facebook and never reached out to warn me. And she knew exactly what I was walking in, me and my kids were walking into it. And it was so upsetting that she never bothered. And I, from that moment, I was like, I'm going to tell the next one. But then now I get why she didn't because how, how unsafe he is and how unstable he is and how he could have hurt her babies uh, and how this person is so unhinged. And so if I went out of my way to find out if there was new ones or whatever and warn them, like if I heard about them or had some way of them just randomly contacting me, hell yes, I'd tell them anything I could to save them. But there are situations where it's not safe. But if it's just a dickhead like DV, like little narcissist prick, and he's not like a murderer, just do it. Try and warn them. Go out of your way to warn them. But honestly, if they did message you, you would tell them. You would. And that's the thing. You, you And you wouldn't think they're crazy, especially if they worded it like that where they're saying, look, I know that we're told this is crazy, but I, just, I can't go through this again. Just Is there something? And imagine that. And then you get to tell them, yeah, he was abusive. And he was emotionally, he was psychologically or financially or whichever way he was abusive. You could just give him a few points and just say, yeah, and then I've got a DV order. Because they don't know there's a DV order. You can't look this stuff up. Australia's criminals are very well protected and the whole system, there can be a DV order they got last week and then they meet you on Tinder and you go on a date and you don't know that. They can get out of prison yesterday and then go on a date with you within 24 hours, meet you online and go on a date with you. And you have no idea they were in a prison cell like a day ago for violent crimes against a woman. You don't know that. So I think it's very important. So you know that if you're on the receiving end of one of those messages and you had been through an abusive relationship, you would tell them. If you hadn't been through an abusive relationship, you would probably say, no, there was no DV, um, you know, we grew apart or something, but, you know, kudos to you for like looking out for yourself and your kids or something like you would be okay with receiving it. So I think we need to normalize doing that. I know, I know it sounds mad, but hopefully there can be a shift. I mean, while men are murdering the man and women they are in Australia, then we should have a right to just shoot a quick message. If there's anything I need to know, let me know. You don't want juice, you don't want dirt, you don't want to know all the gossip or about their sex life or anything. That's not what you're asking. You're asking, is there any legal things? Is there anything that will put my life at risk? And I think we all have a right to ask. Yeah, and maybe until our stupid justice system allows us to have the websites like in the UK and US where you can look up their name and see all the charges against them that were convicted. That would be helpful too. (laughs) But until then... That's how it is in Australia. And to anyone in the UK and America, get on those websites, please, please, like, check. And But also, no, it's very, very hard to get a conviction. So just because they're not on one of those websites showing they've had a criminal history doesn't mean they're not an abuser. So oh, the ex is the best source. And you know that the abuser is going to say, she's lying. If she go, if she says, oh, he cheated or something. But what does a woman have to gain from that? Like, oh, I made up the, this stuff about him so that he'd lose this next girl. Like there's not many women that are that petty and vindictive. 
they're usually more girl code. And, you know, I believe the woman. <laughs> I believe the woman over a man anyway. Anyway, better go. I said it was going to be quick and I've carried on like a pork chop. So a big shout out to anyone who is still listening despite followers going away because I talk a lot. <laughs> So hello to all the listeners. I have a list here of where you're all from. United States, Australia, United Kingdom, Canada, Germany, Latvia, France, and Denmark are the list of countries. So if you're from somewhere that's not on that list, I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's not a big enough percentage. I don't know. And RIP to everyone who uh, abandoned me. But that's all right. I would do because I can't shut up. All right. You have an amazing week. Stay safe. Do what you can to stay safe. Love yourself. You are worth it. Honestly, you are so much more worth it than these horrible, horrible narcissists. All right. Love you. Bye.